Hello and welcome to Mission Aviation Fellowship Flight Crew. My name is Grant Strugnell. You're joining me here in Lesotho on the Africa program. You're joining me here on the first leg of a Code 1 flight, which is a medical evac flight. I'm flying from our home base of Maseru to a village called Semenanyani to pick up a patient and to transfer her to her district hospital in the town of Tabatseka. I got a call at uh, 9 o'clock to uh, fly to Semenanyane and to transfer a patient from the rural clinic there to the district hospital, which is the uh, bigger uh, hospital that uh, is better able to care for that patient. We fly a lot of maternity patients, and uh, she is one of them. She uh, is, I don't know the exact details, but I believe she is uh, an expectant mother. I don't think she's in labor yet, but uh, she has some complications and she's in need of a transfer um, from the small clinic to the hospital. So I'm flying from Maseru to Semenanyane uh, to pick her up and then transfer her to Tabatseka. That transfer flight is actually really short. It's probably uh, uh, about a five or six minute flight, uh, but that flight saves them uh, a couple hour journey in a vehicle and very often they don't actually have access to a vehicle. Um, so we're saving her uh, quite a bit and able to transfer her within uh, just a couple minutes flight. Um, a little bit uh, tricky today because of the wind. Semenanyane is a one-way uh, airstrip, which means you can only land in one direction uh, just because of the terrain and the way that it's built. And very often we have a tailwind on, uh, uh, on uh, land. In. And uh, so that becomes a little bit tricky when uh, the tailwind is too strong. Uh, what it essentially does, just to, to simplify it, is uh, makes your ground speed a lot faster and makes you use a lot more runway. So if the, if the airspeed or if the ground speed is too, uh, too fast, you actually will not have enough runway to, to land. So we have a very uh, strict um, cutoff on this airstrip with 80 knots ground speed on final approach. If I'm on final and my ground speed is more than 80 knots, I'm going to abort and, uh, and get out of there. If it's below 80, I know that's still within the margin for, for landing. Um, so I'm expecting uh, at least a few knots of tailwind today. It is windy here at altitude. I'm being bounced around a little bit, and I've got quite a uh, strong ground speed on my way out to Semenanyane. So um, I'm expecting it to be maybe a 50-50 chance of being able to land. But uh, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not out of the question, so I'm going to give it a shot uh, and see. Uh, what's nice about this one is that we have a really hard cutoff with that 80 knots ground speed. If it's more than 80 knots, then uh, I know I can't do it, and I, 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 um, I can basically get out of there and uh, report back. That's unfortunate, but that's, you know, that's just how it is in terms of safety. We have to make a very clear decision uh, when it comes to uh, those, kind of, um, those kind of issues. So um, we are not too far out here. I'm going to get ready uh, and set up, try and talk you through the, uh, the procedure, the landing. Uh, if I do a little less talking today, or if things are not as clear, it's uh, just because I'm maybe a little bit more focused on, uh, on what I'm uh, doing today. Whenever there's a code one, there's a little bit uh, of extra um, urgency maybe to, uh, to try and make sure that we uh, do our best to, to land. Okay, so I just got a report um, from the people on the ground that wind is about 2 to 5 knots, which is, uh, should be fine. Um, of course, that's if they are reporting it uh, correctly which uh, sometimes is not the case, but um, that's at least encouraging that the window on the ground at the moment is, uh, is doable. Semenanyane is uh, 1,700 foot long, altitude is 7,800, it's our highest airstrip in Lesotho. Um, Three and a half percent upslope, and uh, it's dirt with no obstructions, and the abort is on short final crossing the ridge. I do need my ground speed to be 80 knots or less. So a uh, very specific uh, cutoff for this. 
I'm descending now to uh, 8,800 foot. I need to just make that a little wider. All right, so I can see the airstrip uh, below me. So because we can only land one way, uh, we don't have a choice to land into the wind. And so usually the wind here is a prevalent tailwind. So that makes it very difficult um, or just a little dangerous. It, uh, you know, it speeds up your ground speed for the land and roll and uh, adds some, uh, uh, just kind of eats into your runway. So that's why if your ground speed is too fast, um, essentially your runway is not long enough uh, to land on. And so uh, 80 knots is the ground speed I'm allowed. I approach at 60 knots, which is, uh, you know, uh, once you do all the corrections for true airspeed and uh, calibrated airspeed and all of those things, it probably comes out to about a 7, 8, uh, 8 knot tailwind, somewhere around there is what I can accept. But I'll use the ground speed on the uh, GPS to uh, determine that. Coming down 9,500 foot, getting myself uh, start, to start to get myself set up here. I can see the runway. I'm feeling some bumps and some uh, wind coming down this uh, mountain on my left, but um, nothing too bad. I can start to see the wind suck. There's definitely a tailwind. Um, getting myself set up here with the mixture. Aux pump uh, is off and selector is on the right. All right, definitely a tailwind. Um, I'm not sure that this is going to be landable today, but I'm going to give it a shot. I could go pretty... Uh, far and final approach safely so I, I do get a good uh, good crack at it there's some bumps and uh, uh, yeah it's not completely a tailwind it's more of a tail crosswind so it's it's possible that I'll be able to get in I'm going to give my satellite call set up with the flaps and um, having a look at the runway now right below me here yeah the wind's not too bad it's probably five knots or less on the ground but that does not mean that on final approach it is uh, doing the same thing. Final approach is often more than uh, than that. Esther Brunelasso is briefed. My abort is crossing the ridge on final. If ground speed is more than 80 knots or if something's on the runway, I will abort. Alright, so getting set up here in the pattern. Okay. Alright, it's bumpy and it does definitely get bumpy on the uh, in this valley here. It's again another airstrip that's found in the valley. I'm uh, turning now. I want to get too low here. 70 knots is what I want on uh, base leg. Uh, flaps, power, uh, brakes are checked. Alright, definitely bumpy here. Wind coming down these mountains here is uh, pretty rough. Okay, uh, turn on to final approach. This is a really uh, interesting pattern here. Just to position exactly for final approach and then uh, get set up on final approach as early as I can and see what the ground speed does. Gives me some time to uh, figure it out and get my airspeed right. Flaps, car flaps checked, green light for landing. And we've got 73 knots, that's good for now. Let's see what it does a little later on approach. Okay, approach is stable. I'm uh, set for landing, 74 knots on the ground speed, that's acceptable. 74, still acceptable. It's bumpy, but it's okay. 76. 75. And committed. So I'm now committed to land whatever the wind does from here. Okay, that was a little rough on uh, short final there. That made it interesting. I touched down deep. Had a little, uh, little bump on the front wheel there, which is not ideal, but uh, uh, I was basically just fighting that uh, 
fighting that wind and uh, doing the best that I could uh, with it. So we made it down and uh, see the patient with the nurse or with her family members is here. So I'm going to be shutting down, loading her, and getting going as quick as I can to Tabatseka. So uh, as I shut down, I'm just making sure I run through all my post-flight checks and uh, making sure the aircraft is secured before I get out and help uh, the uh, passenger. Seminanyane is located uh, probably about a five or six minute walk from the clinic. You'll see in the uh, footage from the drone shortly that um, you can't really see the clinic close to it. It's actually just over the hill in the shot that's coming uh, to the uh, left. Um, and it's uh, a few minute walk. These patients are waiting here, or the patient rather is waiting here with her family members. She's not with a nurse, which uh, indicated to me that it wasn't a super urgent uh, flight. Um, she just needed a transfer um, but it wasn't a uh, immediately life-threatening situation. She needed the transfer pretty soon, but um, she was stable and I didn't need to necessarily rush uh, too much. So I'm just asking them if the ambulance has been notified to collect the patient once we land at Tabatseka, which is the district town where I'm, where I'm taking her. They informed me that it uh, had been. This, these uh, couple of family members and friends were just seeing her off, passing me her bags, and I'm just loading her in the back seat. Just the one passenger um, by herself. Often we will take a nurse with us, but um, they were confident enough that uh, she was stable and uh, in a, a good position to be flying by herself. And again, just a very short flight, and so they uh, they were happy with that. Loading her bags in the pod. And you'll notice that um, I'm soon getting back in the aircraft. I did uh, edit a little bit and, and cut a few of the uh, parts out where I didn't have good video. So I'm not uh, that fast at uh, getting everything done. But um, just making sure that you are not seeing every single detail that I'm doing and making it a long video. But just chop into the important parts. Loading back up. She's uh, in the back seat. I'm getting back in getting myself set up. Seatbelt and uh, iPad goes on my leg and then uh, you'll notice a pretty quick start and departure again with some editing just to cut out um, the extent of, of all my checks. Again this uh, flight that I'm going to do which you'll see the whole uh, flight once I take off to where I land in Tabatseka, that whole flight which is six or seven minutes is uh, saving them a multiple hour journey in the vehicle uh, on a bumpy road so really valuable to be able to uh, fly the patient so quickly from her uh, village to the district hospital loaded up getting things set I'll uh, shortly be taxiing and then when the uh, audio from my headset comes back in I will be briefing on the abort for uh, this departure, which we brief on every single uh, takeoff that we do. And uh, you'll hear me running through that pretty quickly. We get quite familiar with these aborts and with the uh, airstrips. Okay, abort point will be the uh, stones on the right. I'll abort if I don't get a good power check. Or a speed check by the uh, uh, start of the stones. Airborne past the abort point with an engine failure, 6 Gs. Gliding at 70, grass will be a left-hand turn onto the, uh, into the valley for the fields. Gas will go on, yellow pump, change tanks. Red pump if it takes, continue with gab. Mayday, 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 before landing. Guts, pump off, selector off, flaps is required, master off before touchdown and get out. Power checked, speed checked, continue. That's her up.
Okay, that's open. I want to get onto the uh, eastern side here, away from this bumpy uh, downdraft. There's my field option straight ahead of me. Bring my power back. And my prop back. It's pretty bumpy on takeoff here, but uh, it's okay. Left trap, left left trap, and power is set. Mixture is set. Engine instruments checked. Nav instruments checked. Performance instruments checked. Fuel caps are in. Uh, some passengers are doing okay. Alright. So Tabatseka is pretty close by. Going to uh, quickly just review the information. We've got two options for landing, depending on the wind. We've got a very short runway or a, uh, a normal kind of uh, length one, but with a crosswind usually. So those are kind of our options. 2,150 foot for the uh, longer one, and 1,600 for the shorter one. So that's uh, actually the shortest one we have. 7,200 foot, so I can actually level off here. I don't need to go. I need to be climbing more than this. Myself set up here for for the cruise, even though it's a three-minute flight. Okay. All right, so I can see Tabaseka ahead of me there. It's uh, the town over there. We're uh, flying through this valley past another airstrip on my left here. It's uh, Bovete. Okay, so my plan when I get to Tabaseka is going to be to uh, fly overhead check the wind, then decide which one way. We've got runways kind of doing this, uh, making an L shape, so I should be able to get an option that's into the wind, uh, which again, usually the option into the wind is uh, pretty short, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's fairly likely that I'll take the shorter option today, so that I'm landing into the wind. If I do take that runway, it is uh, down and breaking by the second marker will be my abort, and uh, it is a, a stop critical, so uh, I can still go around after touchdown. This is your traffic, Charlie Mike. Charlie is uh, from 79 to Tabateka. We're coming up Tabateka now for landing. I start to slow myself down a little. Over here, decide what runway, set up for landing, and uh, hopefully the ambulance is there. My patient is doing okay back there. Still bumpy, but uh, definitely manageable. Okay, I see the wind circuit is favoring the short runway, uh, which is fine. It would be, if I was to take the long runway, it would be a tailwind because it is another one-way uh, landing. So I'm going to go ahead and take the short one. Um, it's quite a nice approach as well. I see the ambulances there waiting for us. So satellite tracker, selector is uh, on the right still. Mixture is set, auto pump is off. Instrument lasso is brief. In the white arc for 20 degrees of flaps. Okay, my board is down and breaking by the second marker. If I'm not down and breaking by the second marker, I will board. Okay, there's no traffic around. I've done a general radio call. I don't need to do more than that for now. My runway is off to my left. I'm on a downwind now. We expect some uh, downdrafts on the final approach. There's another kind of cliff-faced approach here. So I'm expecting a bit of work on final. Uh, and turn onto my base leg over here, start on the descent. 
Valve flaps are closed. I'm going to select my uh, base flaps, 30 degrees, brakes and uh, prop is checked. Alright, so it's pretty smooth over here, get my speed back to 70, double check everything again. Alright, 70 knots. I'm expecting a bit of a crosswind, but with a headwind component here, so uh, this will be a crosswind from the right. I can feel myself crabbing in with that. 30 degrees of flat, uh, sorry, full flaps. Car flaps are closed. Checklist complete with a green light. 60 knots approach speed, and I've got 64 on uh, ground speed. That means I've definitely got a headwind here. Approach is stable. First marker, second marker coming up. We break in and we're on the ground safely. Okay, I'm going to stop over here, try and face into the wind if I can. Okay, I've done that. Lights are off. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, and you? Good. Good, and you? Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. Ciao. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So uh, that was the that was the code one. Thanks for for joining me. Um, I hope that uh, I was able to piece enough together uh, through editing to uh, be able to show you what that flight was like. Um, and as you could probably see, I was a little bit more uh, busy today, dealing with some of the wind and some of the uh, quick decisions, just uh, in terms of um, you know the, the added pressure of having the the code one patient on board. But um, hopefully that all came out well and that you enjoyed the uh, video. Um, I'm now at Tabatseka on the ground. Um, all I need to do is go back to base. So uh, I'm just taking a breather and uh, doing an extra check of the aircraft, make sure everything is uh, doing good. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.